Okay, we're in part three. We're going to take this Genesis character. We're going to dress it, morph it perhaps a little bit, and then export it out to 3D Exchange for use in iClone. The Genesis character you see here is where we left off. In the interim, since the last recording, I've added boots, pants, and vest. Now, they're not showing in the scene because the eye has been turned off. Now they are. Now, each one of these had the assets from Genesis transferred to them. The vest, the pants, and the boots. Each one had this next process done. I took the vest. I go up here and it says display the active paint options. Go to assets. Transfer utility. What I want to do is I want to transfer the capabilities of the Genesis and the bone set structure into the vest so that wherever whatever I do with the Genesis the boots, the vest, etc. will do exactly the same thing using the same parameters. So I choose the vest which is what I'm working on right now. I could have chosen the boots, pants, or this doesn't matter. Show options. Go down here choose morph targets. If this Genesis character has morphing capability built in or applied already, I want the vest and the pants and the boots to be able to use those morphing targets. So I choose source morphs right here and then I choose surface groups. I want surface groups from the Genesis to match the boots, the pants, and the vest. Hit the source. Add a smooth modifier if you think you need it. You don't necessarily need this at all times, especially with the morphing targets already done. So use this at your discretion. I press accept. And what it's going to do is going to transfer. This has already been done. It's a little longer process than you'll see here. But the projection maps the morph targeting and everything has already been transferred. And you're going to see a list roll up of all morph targeting capabilities that the Genesis contains transferred to the boots, pants, and the vest. Now I just did the vest and we lost the maps. It's not very hard to fix. You go into surfaces and you choose the vest. You'll see a multiple map here. Choose this drop down and find your vest in the list. Now, there's two or three different versions. I always choose the first one. Works fine. Just apply it, and you'll see the vest will light back up, and the material will be reapplied. Now, the Genesis character itself has already got morphing capability built in. The morphing capability from the Genesis is also in the boots, pants, and vest. Each item may have its own parameters. For the vest, for instance, hit parameters. And if you look at actor and come down a little bit, you see where it says vest. Now the vest has some adjustments you can make on it. You can loosen the vest, you can tilt the collar, you can make it shorter, or you can flare the collar. Those are the only items you've got available. But in addition to that, I took the morphing capability from this Genesis base character and I applied it to the vest, pants, and boots. So when I make adjustments on the Genesis base, the clothing also has morphing capability, but if I go too far and the clothing decides to break up on the character, I can go and make adjustments using these morph controls also. It makes it a lot easier when you're doing editing. So I'll go back to the Genesis and hit parameters. No morphing's been done at this point. Let's say I want to morph this character up like this. Now you look, the clothing is following because in the scene, parameters, going to general, hit this little arrow miscellaneous and I'm on the Genesis character. It's not fitting anything because it is what we want to fit the clothing to. We go back to vest, parameters, miscellaneous, fit to Genesis. 
if I say none, it disappears. It's there, but it's inside the character as the base morph, not the overall morph that's been applied already. So I go back to fit to Genesis, and the rest comes back where it should fit. All four pieces, the character, and the three pieces of clothing that are on there, the boots, pants, and vest, now have the same morphing capability. We've got the Genesis. Dressed. Question. Do you want to decimate the character? Do you want to check the body morphs? Do all these things before you export. The character is ready to export now. But it's going to be high in poly count. So you have a choice to make. How far will you take it down? Now your decimator, mine is docked here. Your decimator is usually up here under tabs and decimator. That's where mine's at. Yours may be under edit. It depends on where you put it. You can customize and check and set up your own preferences. Mine is here under window, tabs, decimator. So I open up here and do I want to decimate just a character? Well, right now, all I have selected is the Genesis. So, the Genesis character itself is 37744. Overall, I select all and I prepare to decimate. You've got 120,000 bases. if you want to decimate it even further, and you will need to. I'm going to take this down to 60% for overall. And of course you can go into weight mapping. I can sit here and cover every process that Daz has. I just don't have the time for doing that. But I'm not going to be doing any weight mapping here. Go into the decimator. It's done. Now, if I go in and choose the Genesis, and choose the face, that's the area that can really get uh, destroyed when you decimate. If you look at the ears, the ears are a little boxy, a little torn up. So you go back into your decimator and select all again and prepare to decimate. Solutions. I've got it at 60%. Let's bring it up to 70. Let's see what it looks like. It's a little better. Now, if you want to look into the character's face, let's open up the mouth a little bit. We're looking for the teeth area to see how well the teeth look. So I'm going to bring this decimator back up. And you'll notice the teeth are not perfect, but they're not blocked. There's no area missing in the teeth. That's one of the areas you need to look at. Look at the ears, the nose, and some of this can be smoothed out once it's put inside of a 3D exchange anyway. But you look as close as you can look and see if that's the resolution you can deal with. If you can't, bring your decimeter down again go up a little bit higher and you see it gets a little better a little more detail refining for the uh, character itself go up here with the teeth a little better now if you increase this by slider this let go and wait and see how far you want to take this now, this is 100% that's as good as you're going to get. But take it back as far as you think you can take it by sliding it or by typing it in. It's up to you how far you want to take it. I'll take this down to 60. I'm fine with that for right now. It will speed up the process and it will be just fine. If I want to clean it up, I can, but now this guy is morphed anyway. It's up to you. It's your fantasy character, whatever you create here. So, 
I'm going to say that's fine for right now. I'm going to leave it at 60%. Once I leave it at 60% and I decide that's the level I want, then I say create the LOD. And it gives me a level of detail of 72,356 polys. I say OK. It's done. Now, once that's done, the morph's already applied. Uh, the character's ready for export. So you export the character as you see it. And that's the way it will import into 3D Exchange. So you can File, Export, and then you can create. This was a test I was running. I don't need that, so I'm going to delete it. And this is Genesis with material applied to plus body morphs and facial material. So I'm going to go ahead and overwrite that. And it's going to include all the morphs that are there, that are baked in, plus all the controls for the face. Selected, Figures, Animations, Morphs, Embed, Merge Diffuse and Opacity, Merge Clothing into Figure Skeleton, Allow Degraded Skinning, and Allow Degraded Scaling, and Accept it. And what it will do is it will export it with all the head controls, Like the animation, you'll see it roll along the timeline. Now, if I had it down to one frame per second, it would be done now. It would go down to 57, and that would be it. At 30 frames a second, I get a better quality for my purposes of the animation itself. So the export is done, or it's almost done. Once it's done collecting all the animation timeline, then it's going to go ahead and write the file. And then you're ready to import it in your 3D Exchange. That will be the next part. Then we'll show you some of the uh, controls within uh, 3D Exchange itself. That's it for this part. Next part, we'll start up. We'll bring up uh, 3D Exchange 5, import the character, set its materials, do a few edits in there, and then uh, you'll be ready to put your character into action in the icon.